So two videos ago, we examined the null space of a matrix. We found a basis for the null space and its dimension. One video ago, we examined the column space of a matrix, and we found a basis for the column space, and we found the dimension of the column space. To wrap things up, in this example, we are going to examine the row space of a matrix, find a basis for the row space, and find the dimension. So similar to the column space, the column space was all linear combinations of the columns of the matrix. The row space is similar. It consists of all linear combinations of the rows of the matrix. So in this case, since I have four rows and five columns, each row has length five. So kind of the dimension we're working on for the row space is a five dimensional quantity, or it could be up to five dimensions because that's how long these vectors are. So how are we going to find a basis for that space? You know, how many, how many different um, ways can I take linear combinations of these rows, and where does that put me? Does that put me in a five-dimensional space, in a two-dimensional space? What type of space am I working on? So we're going to find the row space of A and the, the size of that row space. What it boils down, again, is finding a reduced echelon form of the matrix. And we, from the last video, know that this matrix A reduces to a matrix that looks like this. When working with the column space, we focused in on the pivots. We said, ah, there's a pivot in column one, there's a pivot in column two, so I know that I need two columns for the column space basis. We kind of do the opposite here. For the row space, we're going to focus in on where we have all zero rows. So where do we have all zero rows here? We have all zero rows in these last two rows, so we're going to toss those out. The important rows are the non-zero rows. So the non-zero rows of B, which is just the row-reduced um, version of A, these rows right here are going to form a basis for the row space. So there are two non-zero rows, so we're going to have two vectors in our basis for the row space. So the basis for the row space of A consists of vectors 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 2. So these two vectors are what I need to form a basis for the row space. It could have been that we were working with and we're working with a matrix where we needed all of them. Maybe we needed to be able to reach every point in this, this space. We needed to be able to take a linear combination of all four of these things. Well, it turns out that there are actually only kind of two linearly independent rows, and we only need two vectors to be able to reach every linear combination of the rows in the original matrix. So, so this basis for the row space has these two vectors in it, which we found by just finding all the non-zero quantities by tossing out those. Since there are only two rows or two vectors in the basis, that means that the dimension of the row space of A is two. So that's the end of this video. So finding the row space, um, I'm sorry, finding the um, basis for row space is very easy. Just do your row reductions like normal, find any non-zero rows, and then those rows directly form the basis for the row space of the matrix.